about the FOMO, do you have a fear of missing out on next generation gaming monitors? In other words, better than just a gaming TV. Because it's a TV, there are compromises to gaming, obviously. But what if you're willing to just focus on the best gaming monitor next generation? What should it have? Today we're going to go over two technologies, beginning with OLED. Because the LG OLED TV really is just a TV with some good gaming features. What if they made an OLED monitor for gaming? That's what we'll hit today. So LG display is not the only OLED maker around. For now it is, right? They are the exclusive provider of OLED TV panels to everybody, whether it's Sony, LG Electronics, Panasonic, Philips, and even Hisense last year, and this year, newcomer Vizio. OLED from LG display, though, is limited. All these manufacturers, regardless of whether they call it a gaming OLED TV or not, is limited by what LG display can provide. And it appears that their limits are centered around their technology that is really just a 120 hertz display. And the smallest they can get is a 48 inch size. Obviously, they would like to get smaller, but their manufacturing capacity is limited. And LG display, I hate to say it, is struggling with profitability simply because the transition from LCD to OLED has not taken off like they had hoped. So they cannot invest in more sizes. As a matter of fact, the sizes they have now, they're backed up in orders, specifically the 48 inch size. They just can't keep up with demand. And so they don't have the capital to invest in smaller sizes. The 48 inch size is as small as we're going to see from LG display as an OLED uh, size moving forward, at least for the next year or two. So that leaves open more sizes from other maker. And specifically, we're going to talk about BOE. So BOE is China's largest display manufacturer, and they're getting into the OLED game, specifically gaming OLED. And we're talking 240 hertz native panel. That's huge because remember that LG display, they're limited to 120. Why? Well, they're focused on TV manufacturing. For a TV maker, really, there is no compelling market or business reason to go to 240. They're designing for movie watchers mostly. You're streaming Netflix, you're watching broadcast, and you're enjoying a good Blu-ray disc. 120 hertz is more than enough for all of you, really. Gaming, we're talking competitive gamers who really want to push the limits of their gaming. PC gamers in particular, they want more than 120 hertz. They want 240 hertz, right? So because they're getting frame rates that are above 120, 160, 200, and this means a 240 hertz native OLED panel is compelling for these hardcore gamers. And yes, motion will be better. Obviously, it is 240 hertz after all. So the BOE demoed a 49-inch 240 hertz display which to me is impressive on two counts. First, it's 240 hertz native. That blows away what LG Display is gonna to bring to the table. However, there are a few shortcomings that fall behind the LG. Remember, LG has been developing this technology for a while now. At this point, they have pushed their peak brightness to as bright as their OLED technology can get. LG Display products, their OLEDs, will probably be the brightest OLED you'll get until QD OLED comes out, which will not be until the end of next year, maybe the year after. But with LG's OLED at around 800 nits peak brightness, that's still impressive because the BOE, the one that they demoed uh, earlier this summer, its peak brightness appears to be around 500 nits. That's equivalent or similar to the LG B10 currently, right? So 500 nits isn't bad, by the way. For a gaming monitor and you're sitting fairly close, it's 49 inches, but it's not the HDR beast that I would love. And that brings the second technology that's next generation coming out from none other than TCL CSOT. So CSOT is TCL subsidiary in charge of display manufacturing, and they create 
they manufacture display products for everybody else. And TCL is the mother company. They provide us with a beautiful TCL 6 Series, R635 this year. And so TCL CSOT showed off at SID Display Week this, are you ready for it? Display HDR 1400 mini LED, 240 hertz panel, 32 inches. Okay. What caught my eye is the display HDR certified for 1400 peak brightness. <laughs> you guys don't understand how amazing that is. Right now, if you went to Amazon or anywhere and you wanted the brightest gaming monitor for HDR, you'd have to limit yourself to a display HDR 1000 rating. Currently, there are two popular monitors rated for a display HDR 1000. They are the Acer Predator X35 for $1,800 and the Asus ROG Swift PG35 VQ for $2,700. Both of these are 35 inch. So the 32 inch is a little bit smaller, but the HDR 1400 at 240 Hertz, wow, that is a whole generation ahead of the last two, but look at the pricing, right? 1800, 2700, 200 hertz display. So we bump the native refresh to 240, and the most difficult part is bumping the display HDR to 1400. Wow, this is a beast. And so between the BOE 49 inch OLED and this 32 inch display HDR 1400 monitor at 240 hertz, you have a selection to choose from based on your size needs or for me, my HDR needs. Now, there hasn't been any monitor maker yet that's announced this display because CSOT, TCL CSOT, is actually a supplier of the panel technology. They're not making it. That means that LG, Samsung, Asus, or Acer, or MSI, they would have to contact uh, TCL, CSOT, and say, we, we're interested, we want this monitor, which I know they will because it's next gen or alternatively, and this is what I'm hoping, TCL may just pick up this product for itself and become a gaming monitor company. I mean, for heaven's sakes, you're already making TVs, TCL. How hard is it to just start making monitors? Why do I want a TCL branded monitor? It's going to be cheaper. <laughs> There's no markup. Basically, TCL is fully vertically integrated. If it starts to sell monitors as well, we'll see the same pricing competitiveness out of its monitors like its TVs. So where the Acer and the Asus are selling these monitors for easily over 1500 and I expect this next-gen mini LED monitor to be similarly expensive, there's a huge margin built in by Asus and Acer. TCL entering the market will force that margin down a little bit to more realistic levels, and we're going to get next-gen monitors at closer to a thousand. Similarly, the BOE 49 inch, because it's not pushing the envelope of technology other than it's 240 hertz native, its brightness still is only 500. So you're going for the OLED, this OLED over the LG OLED for gamers. Gamers now have a choice, right? I don't know if this is going to be an RGB uh, pixel setup, subpixel setup, or BGR. If it's RGB, then this could be a legitimate computer monitor because your text will be clearer. BGR tend to have less clear text because it's not as compatible with the various fonts and the way text is displayed on a computer when using it as a PC. So this will become a viable replacement for the LG C10 48 inch size. And of course, it's not a coincidence that BOE is making this a 49 inch, right? If it's going to go head to head against the LG C10 at 48 inches, being 49 gives it that extra inch. But the key component for me is the 240 hertz. And if it could be RGB layout, then this is a viable computer monitor. But keep in mind, it's still an OLED. Burn-in will still be a risk, so I'll be curious to see how the BOE OLED monitors last. But what am I excited about? Definitely the Display HDR 1400 rated monitors. This looks awesome <laughs> because 240 hertz refresh and HDR 1400 peak brightness, 32 inch size, this far away. I cannot imagine 
a better gaming experience that close, that large. And I'm hoping that it's color accuracy, it's text rendering is there because this would make it pretty much the perfect gaming and creative monitor for video editing. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, stop the FOMO.